Thanks. Well, I think there's really three components that I look at. The first is identity proofing, how to establish that someone is who they claim to be when they're first opening an account. Uh, this is where we see new account fraud most often happening when you see a criminal using a stolen ID or sometimes creating a synthetic ID with a mix of real and fake identity information to open an account in somebody else's name. Uh, the second component is authentication, really answering the question of how do you know when someone who has an account is logging back into that financial service uh, to know that it's really them? Now, this has generally been passwords, but given that passwords offer next to no security today, in fact, it's the most commonly exploited attack vector in breaches, banks really need to move to some sort of stronger authentication. So this is where we see uh, some newer approaches to authentication, things like those using the FIDO standards, uh, which combines on-device biometric matches along with asymmetric public key cryptography behind the scenes to deliver authentication that's both stronger and also easier to use. Uh, we're also starting to see the use of a lot of behavior analytics tools here. Third component uh, in my mind is account management, how to manage the day-to-day -day events that a customer might go through when it comes to identity and digital financial services. So things like adding new accounts, performing account recovery in the event of a lost or stolen password or authenticator, uh, registering a new mobile device to the account and so on. Together, these three components are all critical to delivering digital financial services that are both secure and also easy to use. Well, I'll say at the intersection of identity and digital financial services, I think this issue that you pointed to, that more than a billion people don't have a way to prove their identity, is really the challenge of our time. Uh, here in the United States, where I sit, we at least have reliable, authoritative identity systems. Our big challenge is they're all stuck in the paper and plastic world. There's no easy way for people to use them digitally. But the fact that we at least have a number of nationally recognized authoritative identity systems, that at least gives us a building block. And the government here is considering legislation to start to bring these systems into the digital age. We're seeing some similar efforts in other Western countries. If you're someone in a country that does not have a foundational authoritative identity system in place, however, the challenge is really quite difficult. So I talked earlier about the three layers, uh, identity proofing, authentication, and account management. Now, I can deliver those last two, authentication and account management, without a foundational identity system, for example, by using FIDO standards for authentication that are now built into a lot of commercial smartphones today that, that are used around the globe. But for identity proofing without a government system, banks are going to need to rely on some alternative data, uh, such as that maybe from a mobile uh, network operator or other sources. In some countries, the government might be able to recognize non-government sources of identity in lieu of its own. Uh, the FATF I, uh, digital identity guidance that was published last year flagged that as one alternative that's out there. Uh, but I'll say without the government being an authoritative issuer and having systems to rely on, there aren't easy answers here. And I think countries that, that don't have this infrastructure need to try to figure out some alternatives. Mm -hmm.